Are you in the group who is so ready to be done being pregnant? If so, maybe you're watching this video to see if a little nipple stimulation could put you into labor tonight. Today, I'm gonna review the studies, what they show, and what nipple stimulation or pumping can do for your uterus. With this sort of information, you wanna make sure that you're taking it from an expert who has looked at the studies. I actually have a whole article with the studies linked. If you're interested in those, go ahead, I'll put the link down below. First off, you need to know that you should not be doing any nipple stimulation until you're about 37 weeks, so until you're about due. We know that stimulation of your nipples does cause contractions. We've known that all along. In fact, in the hospital, we order something called a contraction stress test in which we use nipple stimulation or a small amount of Pitocin to get your uterus starting contracting. So we know that it makes your uterus contract. So we really don't wanna do it at a time that would put you into preterm labor. And some of you might be wondering, I have a whole video on breastfeeding your partner during pregnancy. Again, some of the risks and the benefits. I'm gonna put that down below in case you're interested. Now there are risks to stimulating that area. The main one being that your uterus can contract too much. You're stimulating so much up here, it puts all this oxytocin and your uterus can contract too much, which is called hyperstimulation. And we do not want that. The thing is that can also happen in the hospital with Pitocin. And usually if people are having a lot of contractions, they just stop doing the nipple stimulation. So I'm saying that it can be both ways, but you want to talk with your provider before doing this so that you know what to watch for, because it could absolutely be as unsafe as using oxytocin in the hospital. Speaking of the hospital, have you created your birth plan? Do you know what you're wanting for your upcoming hospital delivery? I think that doing things like this to prepare your cervix can be a great way to aim for the birth that you're looking for. I'm gonna put the link for my free birth plan series called Birth Plans Made Easy down below. I of course love birth preferences, but birth plans just rolls off the tongue. Okay, so often I hear people in my comment section saying, we don't study things like that because it's not big pharma. But guys, there are a number of studies on this and I find that to be super important because if you have one of these, most often you also have breasts. And so in places where you can't just go to the hospital to induce labor, even if you're like 42 weeks, we can use these to maybe get labor going. And so it's important that we study medications, but also things like this that can be done by anyone to induce labor. Because as much as we wanna say that our bodies are made for this, the reality is some people have a really hard time kickstarting that body into labor and we need a little bit of help. Thank goodness for things like this. There is a huge Cochrane meta-analysis that took a bunch of data from a bunch of different studies and kind of correlated us to give us some information. The first thing I want you to know is that in these studies, a lot of these women were doing breast stimulation, so pumping or just hand stimulation, if you don't have electricity, for three hours a day. So this isn't just like putting your pump on for five minutes and then going about your day. A lot of these, it was a lot of stimulation. Now I can't exactly remember like if they were just like touching their breasts like every 10 to 15 minutes or if it was more than that. But just so you know, some of these studies had like a lot of nipple stimulation. Okay, what did they see? There was really no difference in the C-section rate over between people who were doing nipple stimulation to those that were not. And the studies seem kind of mixed on the whole hyperstimulation thing. Some did not see any hyperstimulation and some did see some hyperstimulation. Again, that's when your uterus contracts too much because you're just pouring in the oxytocin after the nipple stimulation. One of the main studies also showed that there was actually no difference in people's cervix after 12 to 24 hours of the nipple stimulation. So that's in the first half day to day of doing nipple stimulation, meaning it is unlikely to put you into labor tonight. So let's just say you're hanging out, no labor, nipple stimulation, probably not going to kickstart you into labor. So that's something good to know as well. I will also say that the studies did show some perinatal death, meaning that the baby was born stillbirth. If you're looking to reduce your stillbirth rate, I'm a huge fan of doing kick counts, especially if you're doing something like nipple stimulation, I'm going to put my video on how to do them down below in case you don't know. But it's important to know that pregnancy can be a scary time. And again, we talk with our provider before we start any of these measures. One of the things I loved is that there was a decrease in postpartum hemorrhage. So that's when you bleed out a lot after you have your baby. And that can be that we used, you know, manual stimulation rather than oxytocin in the hospital. Huge fan of that. Would love to prevent lots of postpartum bleeding. 
One of the big things I found is that there were more women who went into labor after 72 hours, so that's a little bit of time, versus those who had done nothing. So this is something that you might start one day, but that it might start to get things going versus doing absolutely nothing. Now, for some of you, you're thinking three hours of nipple stimulation, I would rather just go into the hospital and be hooked up to an IV. I totally understand that. But if you're thinking I would like to avoid the IV and the oxytocin, then maybe this is something that you would wanna try after you get the advice of your provider. Now, if you like this expert information based on the evidence, based on studies, please give this video a like. It really helps our channel get seen by more people and hopefully you'll see more of our videos coming up. One of the other things that I found really interesting is that patients who started doing nipple stimulation before a Pitocin induction actually delivered sooner than those who had no nipple stimulation. Now, one of the things I really wanna be clear about is this study is looking at broad ranges of people, okay? There were plenty of people who did nipple stimulation who maybe were in labor longer than those who did no nipple stimulation. So the, again, the study is giving us broad swaths of data. How it applies to you can always be different. Now, one of the most annoying things is that many of the studies said that this should not be done unless you are under the direct supervision of your provider, which I sort of rolled my eyes at. I feel like we need to give people more ability to do things on their own rather than saying you have to come in the hospital to do this. Of course, when we say stuff like that, your provider may say, you know, I really don't recommend nipple stimulation because if they were to recommend it and you had uterine hyperstimulation at home and you didn't stop doing it, then you could really have a problem. And they, of course, are worried about getting sued because labor and delivery is one of the most litigious professions out there. However, I think mostly you're just discussing the risks and the benefits, what you should be watching for, and then you're gonna make your choice what you're gonna do or not. And then I would let your provider know, hey, I've heard what you've said about the possibilities of uterine hyperstimulation, but I think I'm going to try it just so you know because I think it's really important to be both honest with our provider and also be able to take some things into our own hands. Again, after you're due. This isn't something that you're wanting to try at like 33 weeks because you're tired of being pregnant. Now, anecdotally, I didn't see any studies on this. If you are having a lot of prodromal labor, so usually that's like you start having contractions, they last for quite a long time, and then they sort of peter out. I do think that if that were to happen to me now, I might try 15 minutes of pumping to see if that would get anything going more. Again, if it peters out again, then it happened. It would probably be worth the effort for me, again, talking with my provider and making sure it's okay with them before I got started. I've heard a lot of people felt like pumping did get them over that hump of prodromal labor into an actual pattern of active labor. Now, what have I seen? I've definitely seen people who have probably increased their labor time due to pumping or sometimes even breastfeeding a younger sibling. I've had people who were breastfeeding their two-year-old while they were in labor, and I do think that it really sped things up. So that's something to know as well. So would I recommend this? It really depends on your comfort level. If nipple stimulation or pumping just gives you the oogie boogies, I actually have a whole post about four things you can do to prepare your service. Again, recommend that you talk with your provider. Can I say that anymore in these videos before you start them? But there are some other things that you can try that may have similar benefits to this. But if you're like, dang it, worth a try. I'm totally ready to get this baby out you know, then it's worth a try, again, after talking with your provider. The other thing I have to say is that I wish I had just chilled out more about going into labor. There was so much of me that felt like I could start labor, when in reality, we really don't have as much control about when or where or why we go into labor as we wish we did. Mother nature is just like that, and it's getting you prepared for kids because you aren't gonna be able to control them either. And I'm here calling out the, the world saying, please, let's have more studies about things like pumping and things we can be doing to prepare our cervix before labor to possibly prevent C-sections or make labor easier in the hospital. Now, if you're doing something like this, you definitely wanna make sure that baby is staying safe. I'm gonna put that video that saves 33% of stillbirths. The closer you get to your due date, the more likely you are to have a stillbirth. So doing kick counts can be a big help. Be sure and watch that video. Thanks for joining us here on The Pregnancy Nurse where we get you prepared, not scared, for your upcoming hospital birth. Ha 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 ha!